Uh, hi, uh, my name is Tuan. I work for Climatech, which is the company that installed this software or uh, hardware to control the EMS system for this particular building. Uh, these controllers are Allison controller. They come with BACnet standards. I know you have different type of controller on sites to control different buildings, but technically it all come back to a central point that's downstairs in the electrical room. Uh, later on the way, we can walk and show you where that is, but that's technically the brain of this building. All these pieces control are the air handlers, the pumps, the boilers, and what other accessory exhaust fans all come back into that central point. And that where it's going to produce the graphic for you guys to see over the front end. Uh, on your graphic, you got a nice little display, the interpretation of how all these units are. Like, you know, all these, you know, air handlers, component wise, you have supply fan, return fans, uh, discharge temperatures, um, high static, the limit switches inside, the supply fan, return fans. When they go in alarms, you should be able to see that on your front end. Um, some alarms are hard latches and some are software latches. Uh, hard latches are the safety you, you saw earlier. Those are for emergency purposes and also tie into the smoke detectors. If smoke detectors go off, it would trip the VFDs as well. And when it trips, those particular hard latches, you have to manually reset here. You can't do that over the computer. Uh, Purpose of that is just make sure you know that that hardware is tripped on something that is you know, non-essential to the computer-wise. You know, maybe some discharge temperature is not working or something like that, or the fan fail. Um, the controller here locally, if it's tripped on software latches, you can reset the controller and it will clear for you. Or if somebody go up here and didn't know, they changed the filter or something like that, and they turn off the handlers. Uh, they're linked together, supply and return. So if you turn off one, it should set us, you know, it's an alarm, and it will shut off both of it. But if it go off that particular way, once a unit come back, or you go back, you finish your filter change or whatever, and you turn it back on, it won't gonna run. And when you see this light here, it indicates that it's not lit up. How Craig mentioned earlier, these things does have a little manual, but try not to mess with it, because um, if you put that on relay overrides, and you forget, and you walk away, once you go back to your computers, whatever you do, like I said, the unit's on schedule, it's not gonna go back. It's gonna stay manual for a reason, and you're gonna have alarms all over the place. So this is the last thing in terms of services that you need to do that. That's for um, troubleshooting purposes. It's not as a functionality of the system. Um, the, these here, even though when the light is off, like earlier, if you flip it, it will command it to run, but it's only if you have a power source. So if this panel go off on power, none of this is gonna work. Um, everything that uh, he mentioned in terms of valves, damper positions, it's being controlled off these types of controllers. Uh, they have a light indicator here. The first thing you wanna do when you have an issue with this unit on your front end, that you're not seeing values or units not running, you wanna make sure you look at that blinking lights. This here is your important one. If it's not blinking three times, that means something is wrong. Uh, it's not talking to the brain of this building. If it blinks twice, that means it's online, but it's not communicating to the front end. So the first thing usually you wanna try is reset. But if reset still doesn't bring back the unit for some whatever, whatever reasons, then you wanna make sure you call us. There's the front of this panel, there's the tag has the numbers, or I'll give you my car, well, Mark has the auto information on there, but the office should have as well. Give us a call, and we have a service department that's 24 seven if you need to. Um, but you don't wanna try and manual anything yet. Um, mass control here. Everything else, once it's in uh, operations, you should be doing it front end. You don't have to go up here and do anything. It's the only thing up here you can manually do is just start stop. And the fans on the VFDs, if it goes to alarm, I'm not gonna be able to send out a signal from here. And when you flip this relay, it's just gonna go to minimum. So even if you start this, the unit's gonna to to run if the alarm is tripped. Um, all the units right here has, uh, Airlet 1 has similar setup, exact same controller as well, input and outputs. Uh, these controller, once they go bad, if it's not light up for any reason, it's not commanding the units on, they can swap easily, just get a new controller, swap in, download the code. Because they, they're pre-programmed. It's pretty much like a unitary controller. You can program however it is, but the existing program will stay the way it is. So take out the hardware, put the new hardware in, load the program, and you're ready to go. Um, the boiler, we don't have control, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, the pump, we do. And the pump's based on differential pressures downstairs and in the hallway. 
the only one extra equipment on here that the controller is not officially around there is the cam hood area. The cam hoods has exhaust fan on the roof. They also have VFDs based on the little sequence they have inside the room for the chemical hoods. That controller is outside of the room uh, on the ceiling. It's not physically like a round area like you see here. Like if the air handler, the controller is here, the uh, pumps, boilers, we try to keep it around the area so you can get access to or replace or troubleshoot. That's easier for you. But that particular unit, the uh, controller is down there. I'll show you on the way. It's in the hallway. It's right outside where the chemical hoods area is. This particular room is different, different from the rest of the units out there. The, uh, most of the space out there are VV system, like Craig mentioned, they damp it up and down as need to. These boxes out here are the same. When it's on, it's a, uh, they call it temperature control modes. The VVs here, there's two of them controlling this particular room. They put air into this room. They both label like one, uh, two, 212 and 213, or two boxes giving air into this room. But based on these two switches, these two switches control the exhaust fan for that side and this side, north side and south side. And the VVs here have different modes based on whether it's off, on, or on, off, etc. Uh, when both of these are off, that side of the hood is only running and it's maintaining building or particular room pressures. This is the room pressure sensors. It's supposed to have the VEV um, go to a certain uh, damper positions and airflow to maintain a negative pressure so it's always sucking in here and exhaust out through the hoods. If the two switches are on, then both fan and exhaust fan that we get to see on the north side of the roof, they have VFDs in there as well. 